Today, we are going to resole a very nice pair of Anthony Cleverly shoes. I'm gonna show you the easiest way to determine whether or not your shoes need to be resold. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. These Anthony Cleverly shoes are amongst my favorite, but they're fastly approaching the end of the lifetime of the outsoles. Now these are a really high quality pair of shoes. They retail for about $1,600. Uh, and of course they come Goodyear welted. Goodyear welting is the process where a welt is attached to the interior of the shoe that really is holding together all the different parts of the upper. The upper, uh, any hard countering, the interlining, the insole are all held together by the welt. Then the outsole is sewn to that welt. Now you can't see the stitching here uh, because this uses something called invisible channel stitching. So essentially, the outsole is a single piece of leather that runs the full length of the shoe, on top of which the heel block is attached. Now the outsole is attached to the shoe via the welt. It is sewn on through the stitching that you see along the welt itself. So that is kind of how this is held together. Whenever you send your shoe to the cobbler, that outsole is simply just cut off of the shoe and pulled off without ever disturbing any of the upper. The shoe's gonna fit the same whenever you receive it back, and then they attach a new outsole to the shoe. Now, let's look at how to determine whether or not your shoes need to be resold. Well, the best thing to do, of course, is to turn them over and inspect the outsole. Now, if you see any visible uh, holes or anything like you've been wearing through the toes uh, into the actual welt uh, of the uh, front of the shoe. Those, of course, are red flags that not only do your shoes need to be resold, but they probably should have been resold months ago. This shoe, on the other hand, you can see doesn't show uh, any visible holes, so uh, I'm not being negligent and not sending these shoes to be resold, but they do need to be sent back, and I'm gonna show you how to tell. So the best thing to do is to take your thumb and to really press down on the center of the shoe right at the ball of the foot. You want your outsole to be firm. Now you can see that whenever I press down on this pretty easily, that that outsole is flexing. Now what does that mean? That means that that outsole has worn thin uh, and is no longer providing proper support. So this shoe definitely needs to be sent back in to be resold. Now if you look at the left shoe, uh, for most American men, the left shoe is gonna wear out before the right shoe because whenever we're getting into our car, we inevitably pivot or twist on our left foot. That causes uh, even more wear uh, to the left pair of the shoes, or to the left shoe, and you can see some of that circular wear pattern from me getting in and out of a car. Now whenever I press down on this, again, that softness is even more pronounced. You compare that uh, to the um, waist of the shoe where the outsole's not been worn at all because it's not making contact with the ground, and this is still very firm. Whereas right here in the front, no firmness at all. So this, without question, uh, has reached the end of its lifetime, and it's important to send your shoes in to be resold uh, before any holes are worn through uh, because that can allow water to get into the inside of the shoe and cause all sorts of problems. Now, are all shoe restorations the same? The short answer, of course, is no. And on a pair of shoes like this, uh, that really was just so skillfully made at a factory in Northampton, beautiful kind of tight waist, nice little bevel right here, uh, neatly trimmed and shaped, not anyone can do this work. These shoes are made with an oak bark tanned leather outsole. It's the highest quality leather outsole that you can find, tanned in pits for up to nine months using only natural ingredients. They're more water and abrasion resistance. And this is just the quality of outsole that you would expect on a shoe like this. And not only is it more flexible, more comfortable, it's gonna last longer and provide better water protection. So what are your options when resoling a pair of shoes? Well, of course, you can always send them back to the original manufacturer. But in this case, Anthony Cleverly, or George Cleverly, the company that uh, does the Anthony Cleverleys, is located in London. So in order for me to have these resold uh, by George Cleverly, I'd have to post them all the way to the United Kingdom, then they'd have to send them to their factory, and next thing you know, 
three months and probably four or five hundred dollars later, I'm going to receive these shoes back. This is the reason that I created our Kirby Allison Certified Shoe Restoration Program, really kind of drawing on my love and passion for high-end footwear, uh, along with my dissatisfaction with how difficult it is to find really good quality workmanship here in the United States. I collaborated directly with bespoke shoemakers uh, and some of the top Northampton factories to really hone in on how to do the best quality of shoe restoration. Then I went out and found the most talented cobbler here in the United States, Jim McFarlane, who exclusively does all of the work for our Certified Shoe Restoration Program. Jim is a multi-generation and multi-award winning cobbler who does absolutely outstanding work and his hands are the only hands that touch any pair of shoes that come through our program. So I'm gonna package these babies off and I'm gonna send them out for our Kirby Allison Certified uh, Shoe Restoration Program and I'm going to choose the Sovereign Grade uh, Shoe Restoration because that's what's going to allow us to really meet that highest standard of any shoe restoration job. Now what do you get with the Sovereign Grade Shoe Restoration? Well the most important thing uh, really for these shoes is that invisible channel stitching, the additional detail you have on the nailing on the toe and the heel. And if you look at this heel block, it has a beautiful shape and pitch to it. And I want that really replicated uh, in the shoe restoration. And so more work is done to actually take a standard heel block and to really shape that uh, into the same shape. Another characteristic that I almost forgot to mention of our certified shoe restoration program is that not only do we use exclusively J.R. Rendenbach oak bark tanned leather outsoles, again, that highest quality, every pair of shoes that comes through our shoe restoration program receives a new heel block that is also made from 100% J.R. Rendenbach uh, oak bark tanned leather. Now, for a really high quality pair of shoes uh, like these Anthony Cleverleys, that's not much of a problem. But whenever you look at like a pair of Allen Edmonds where the heel block is essentially particle leather, by upgrading the level of the heel to J.R. Rendenbach, you're substantially improving the look and the overall elegance of that shoe. So I'm gonna box these up, send them off to Jim, and in about two weeks we should get these back. We'll unbox them and take a look at them. Hi, I'm Jim McFarlane with The Hanger Project, and today we are going to resole a very nice pair of Anthony Cleverly shoes. What we like to do is we like to restore it back to its original factory condition. That means the same thickness of the, of the uh, sole, of course. We don't want to change. It's a very expensive, nice shoe when a person buys a shoe like this. They buy it for a reason, so we like to put it back into the original factory specs. Same heel, same width, same tapering, same waist. So basically, we want to clone this shoe. At first, we're going to take off this heel. Since this is a very special heel, I'm going to get the exact measurements, just so when we go through the final process, we have it just right. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a layer off at a time and um, as we go here, okay, now these have what they call thread nails that come up through the heel base. If you try to sometimes put uh, a heel popper underneath here and try to lift all this off at once, it can be a little bit difficult. And uh, for me, this is always the, the gentlest way to do it without breaking anything or ripping anything up. And we can measure each layers. We're gonna have to replace those. So we wanna make sure we get everything just right. And we're gonna take the last one off there. So, we'll cut these, these threaded nails, covering it up so I don't hit myself with this, because they are sharp. What we're going to be doing with this, uh, our selection today, uh, as far as soles and materials go, I'm going to use a JR Flex sole. I'm going to use a 7-8 thickness. This is a very thin sole. Uh, it's comparable to what we're, we're going to put on here. 
I'm using the flex sole for a few reasons. The flex sole will keep, I'll be able to keep that nice shape in here with the waist. Keep in mind, just because it's a jar flex, it's a little more flexible. As far as sacrificing wear, you're not gonna be doing anything like that. So no worries, the quality is amazing. So now it's time to separate the, the sole from the shoe. Now with the George Cleverleys and several other ones, they put some tacking in the toe. So a lot of times I just take my, the edge of my pliers here and I'll just put it on the edge of that tack to lift that out. Now a nice shoe like this has a lot of stitches per inch. Now underneath this sole, we're gonna find a little piece of material under there that helps keep the shape of that arch area that we're gonna have to put back in there. So once we're back here in the back of the heel, it's nailed in there really solid. So we like to keep our thumb close to the edge so we don't tear or break anything there. So here we've got everything off. We, we gently took everything off of these cleverlies because like I said, we don't want to tear anything, rip anything. It has a wooden shank. So if we would have just bent this off, we would have definitely broke that shank. And this cork is really nice in here. We do have some cracking, but overall the shoe's in really nice shape. So we're gonna go ahead and smooth all this off on the machine. And then we're gonna hand pick all these stitches out. And the reason we're gonna hand pick them is, is they're so close and there's so much detail in here. We don't like to put them on a machine because uh, sometimes when we pick them with the machine, it will roughen up the the pattern a little bit. So we'll try to keep that clean as well. All right. All right. So we have about 250 stitches per shoe on this one. So what we're going to do is got my nifty little tool here. I use to pick these stitches. Yeah, right in there. You can see how we Pulled those out. All right, we about have all those stitches out of there. And then we can go cement these guys and get them ready for the sole. All right, so that's nice and dry. So we're gonna go ahead and Get the sole on here, try to center that logo the best we can. Okay. I like to hand press that on as much as I can because I like to keep that bottom as clean as I can without putting too many hammer marks in it. Plus I want to try to shape that sole as nice as I can. So we can get that. I'm gonna lightly press that. Just to press it down, I'm not gonna leave it on there long. Okay. Some things will press for a long time, but on this, I just wanted to gently put it, put a little pressure on that. So we're gonna press that welt down on that leather. All right, so next we're gonna trim that down on the edges and then we're gonna get it ready to blind stitch.
I use brass nails um, back in the heel area. One nice thing about brass is they, they don't rust. It uh, does a nice job. It's definitely more expensive using brass, but um, they clench in there really nice, keep the heel nice and tight. And like I said, you know, if they get wet, you don't have to worry about the about them rusting because they're not steel. Now comes the fun part with the blind stitch. I like using stretching fluid because it uh, penetrates really well without spotting the leather. This is where I hold my breath, hoping to get this around perfect on the first shot. Gonna double check the measurement. What we did there is good. One thing I like to do as well is now that we're, you know, I've got the one shoe resold and not the other one, but I can measure the width, put them side by side, and see that everything measures the same there. Everything is same width. You never want to change the size of the shoe, that's for sure. So anyway, so we're going to go ahead and put some adhesive on this and start building that heel block back to the way it was. We're going to get ready to put our heel base together, go with two layers on the first try. Now the reason why I'm going with only two layers and not a whole block at once is because the whole block at once is too stiff, can't get the right shape. So I'm just gonna go two layers so I can round that out correctly the way it's supposed to be done, then sand it flat and level it. So, looks too big now, but once we finish sanding it, it won't be. All right. Trim a little bit of that heel base off of here. start sanding and shaping that. Getting close. All right, so here we go now. We're gonna put this combination heel together. We'll go about right there. This one we're gonna to have to put in there too, and I'm gonna to have to cut that some more. So let's go to the machine. It's close, it's close, it's real close. See how close I am? Okay, so we got the brass nails in there. We're getting there. So, we'll glue that heel seat back in there. A friend of mine in New York taught me about this certain type of cream with this gold finish, which is nice. Um, doesn't really change the color of the sole much, but the reason I put a little bit of this wax on the bottom is because it puts a protective barrier on the leather 
in case I were to, you know, when I'm putting color, you know, this is getting dark brown. So if I accidentally get dark brown on the bottom, I would easily be able to take it off because the wax protects the pores of the leather and keeps it from sinking in there. So especially if this were a leather top instead of a suede, if it was like a calf skin, that way you don't have to worry about messing it up with, with polish. It just cleans right up. Since this is a nice suede top, I'm going to use a nice suede refresh product that um, cleans and softens that suede up a little bit if it's dry. So what I'm going to do is just rub over it real good with the cloth, get any dirt out. I'm just brushing up that suede to get it to stand up some. Using a nylon brush. Sometimes I'll use brass, but it just depends. You don't want to scratch it. I like a nylon brush because it's safe and does a good job, fairly good job. So anyway, we got the, the tops. They need to dry a little bit, they're a little damp, but anyway, we'll go ahead and start putting the color on there. This is just an edge dressing I'm putting on. It takes a few minutes to dry and then I'll buff that out as well. All right, so I'll give that about two minutes or three minutes to dry and then we'll come back and finish that up and we're getting pretty close to being done. We got a nice gloss going on the edge here. Once you get that suede up nice, if you get your fingerprints on it, you mat it back down. So <laughs> the trick is getting that suede up just the right way. All right. So now one thing left to do and we're all done. All right, so there it is. Anthony Cleverly Recraft, JR Full Soul, Combo Heel, all done. Wow, Jim, thank you. You did an exceptional job on these pair of George Cleverly shoes, uh, and it really goes to show you just how far a great resoling job can go. These shoes really look as good as new, uh, and that is what I really like about our Kirby Allison Certified Shoe Restoration Program, is that you can return a pair of shoes made at the highest quality back to their original condition without having to send them all the way back to England. For more information on our Kirby Allison Certified Shoe Restoration Program, visit kirbyallison.com and click the shoe repair link in the top right corner. 
Of course, if this is your first time visiting uh, this YouTube channel, uh, please hit that red subscribe button in the upper right hand corner so that you can learn whenever we release new videos. And if you're on Instagram, please follow me at Kirby Allison. It's really the best way to stay up to date about what's going on in our world. And if you haven't visited KirbyAllison.com, please take a moment to do so. Of course, it's how we support this channel. And there you'll find the largest collection of luxury garment care and luxury shoe care accessories in the world, as well as other great clothing accessories like this beautiful sovereign grade necktie that I'm wearing today. Uh, this is one of my new favorites. It's a beautiful 40 ounce uh, silk twill, a uh, horizontal twill, uh, and it is an absolutely beautiful uh, solid tie. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Thanks for watching.